If you want to switch scenes, turn off and on sources or mixer audio, using the default Steam VR UI can be a little bit cumbersome, takes the immersion away from your viewers, and frankly looks a little bit unprofessional. Hi, I'm Adam Bombadi, and today I'm going to show you how to use voice commands to control your streams. Now, this isn't exactly a new idea. People who play Elite Dangerous have been using voice commands to control various features on their ship, but I haven't been able to find tutorials out there for streamers and controlling their stream in a similar manner. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the program Voice Attack, as well as some basic commands and things you can do with it. Calypso, start the tutorial. You got it. You can find Voice Attack through the website or on the Steam store. They have a free demo version which lets you have one profile with a max of 20 commands. The full version is currently $11.99 on Steam or $10 on the website but gives you unlimited profiles, commands, and more updates. Once you've installed Voice Attack, the first thing you're going to need to do is to make a new profile. To do this, you're going to click on the plus button and then create new profile. I'm going to call this one tutorial, but you can name it whatever you want. I recommend that with all of these commands, you have some sort of a voice or a sound trigger so that you know that the command has actually worked. So in my case, uh, I use a female robot voice. So whenever I ask it to do a command, I will get some sort of a response. And I'll show you how to set this up in the next command. You're going to also want to make sure that you have your mic set up properly in the settings. So we're going to click on this button. We're going to go to audio and then just check here to make sure that the program is using your proper microphone. Make sure that your Windows speech recording device is also set to the same microphone in the recognition tab. Now I'm going to go over some basic commands and how to set them up. Because there will be a few of them, I'll make sure to timestamp them in the description below so you can skip around to the parts that you need. So the first thing we're going to do is learn how to set up and change scenes, say from your live screen to be right back screen and vice versa. I'll also show you how to mute your mic and game audio in this as well because I typically mute myself when switching over to be right back so people don't hear me munching on things or whatever. When you're in your voice attack menu, you're going to hit on edit profile and then this box should appear. You're going to do new command, then we're going to type in the trigger words that you want in order for it to work. So in this case, I'm going to do, whoops, let's get that be right back screen up. Then you're going to want to assign a hotkey. So you're going to click on key press. And I usually use my F keys for this. So I'm going to use F4. You just hit F4. We're going to keep it to press and release. Okay. And then like I mentioned earlier, I do like having some sort of sound trigger so that I actually know that the command worked. So to do this, you're going to do other sounds, play a sound. Then you're going to hit on this to be able to browse your files. Uh, I'm going to pick one that just says, OK, we're going to open, leave everything as is, hit OK, OK, and then apply. So now we need to be able to have the same hotkey match up in our broadcasting software, which in my case is Streamlabs OBS. So we're going to need to go into settings, hotkeys, then you're going to want to scroll all the way down to find your BRB screen. And the very bottom should be a switch to scene. So I've already selected that to F4. Um, I also like to bind my mute mic and mute desktop audio to the same keys. Some people prefer to have a different hotkey for mute mic, but the only time that I personally mute it is when I'm in my Be Right Back screen. So just for the sake of ease for me, I just have them all set to the same thing. So once you scroll all the way down to your mixer, you're going to find your mic. We're going to assign that to F4 as well as the desktop audio if you choose. I only mute my desktop audio because I have a video that plays in my Be Right Back screen. So I don't want two different audio tracks playing at one time. All right, then we're going to select done. Then in theory, when we say, let's get that Be Right Back screen up. Okay. It'll bring up your Be Right Back screen, just like that. So now that you have a Be Right Back screen up, you're gonna definitely want to be able to switch back to live, right? We're pretty much gonna be doing the same thing. We're gonna go to edit profile again, add a new command. This time I'll name this one something like switch back to live. Uh, for this one, I'm going to assign the hotkey of F5 and I'm going to assign another sound command so that I know it actually registered. Uh, let's do 
this one as welcome back. Okay. Okay, and then we're gonna do apply. And the same thing we did last time, we're gonna go into your broadcasting software's hotkeys, except this time we're gonna go to the live scene, which in my case is just called scene, but scroll down. So we're gonna put F5 in this one. And then also equally as important, you're gonna wanna make sure you go all the way back down to your microphone and your audio. And F5 to unmute, F5 to unmute, done. Switch back to live. Welcome back. Then it'll switch back to your live screen, which is probably going to be your game in the background or whatnot. You can also use voice attack to trigger certain sound commands. For example, if I say, bye Felicia. Bye Felicia. Or whack. Whack. Then a sound command triggers. This one is super simple, just like how we did for the response commands for the AI, or in my case, it's Calypso. All you have to do is go to other sounds, play a sound, and then just navigate to whatever sound that you want to choose. You can also use voice attack to turn off and on certain sources. For example, I have a channel point reward where viewers can make me put on different costumes. So I have it set so that when I change, I use the command, let's change costumes. And then as you see, some GIFs appear, my webcam turns off, uh, Calypso, which I've coined as the sound AI, she'll stay up there. Then once I'm changed and I go back, I'll say, I'm back from my costume change. And that turns my webcam back on, gets rid of all the GIFs, which are sources down here. And yeah, so you can use it individually to control various sources as well. Lots of things you can do with this. So for these commands, I have them tied to different hotkeys. So for the initial one, I have that set to F2. So for example, F2 will show uh, three different GIFs as well as turning off my webcam and then my settings for coming back from said costume change are set to F3. So if you go into Streamlabs, I have F3 set to turn off those GIFs as well as turning back on my webcam. Another thing you can use it for is turning on and off timers. I will post a link to this in the description below, but basically you can add one of these timers as a browser source, and I'm gonna show you how to use voice attack to enable it or disable it. I use timers to keep track of how long I'm in a costume for, for channel point rewards, but you can also use it as a countdown for giveaways or charity streams or anything else. So how this one works is F6 turns on the timer. Uh, the GIF of Calypso, my AI shows up. She says, okay. And then once the command is done, then the GIF turns off. And then as far as turning off the timer, it's pretty much the same thing. I've got the F7, which turns off the timer. Calypso appears, Calypso says her thing and then the source for Calypso turns off. So I'll show you what this looks like in action. Set timer for 10 minutes. And then uh, I have it really tiny because it's not something that I really need my viewers to see when I'm doing channel point rewards, but I wanna be able to just have it on the source somewhere. And then when it goes off, I'll say, turn off timer. And now it's disabled. Another thing you can do with voice attack is switch between your mixed reality, whether that's avatar or webcam setup to a first person perspective. And there's two ways you can do that. The first is just by switching the whole full screen. So for example, turn on first person view. Okay. And then now we've got your whole first person perspective. And if you want to go back, you can do turn off first person view. Okay. And now you're back into mixed reality. What I personally like doing is actually adding in uh, a little camera in the corner that you can turn off and on, but you can do this in whatever way you like. Regardless of how you do this, the setup's gonna be the same. Uh, for turning on the first person view, I have that set to F11 in Streamlabs to turn on. And to turn off the first person view, I have that set to F10. And don't forget the F8 keys, those are just for my Calypso robot GIF. So that 
These have nothing to do with the actual scene itself. It's just going to be that one hotkey. So for the full screen version, I have them, as you can see, it matches up in the Streamlabs sources with F11 and F10. Um, if you want to be able to show the version in the corner with the frame, uh, I'm just going to move these over. So you're going to want to make sure the frame is also part of the open VR capture or whatever first person view you're going to use. So we're going to do F11 to show and F10 to hide. So if you want to have your first person view show in the corner, you can say turn on first person view. Okay. And there you go. And then if you want to turn that off, turn off first person view. Okay. So yeah, there's two different ways that you can set it up depending on the style that you want, but there are a ton of more options of things you can mess with with this. Sometimes if voice attack is having a hard time reading out your command or recognizing it, you can actually use the Windows speech recognition tool to be able to train your computer to understand you more clearly. So in order to access that, we're going to go into the search box and type in speech, and then you're going to open the Windows speech recognition tool. Then once it's launched, you're going to right click, open speech dictionary, add a new word. And so here it's here we're going to add the command that we are having trouble with. Um, for example, let's just make up something like Calypso mute my microphone. Then you get the option to be able to record the way you would typically say this command. Uh, and there's a checkbox here if you have a bunch of commands that you want to add at once. So you'll just keep going through this command prompt in a loop. We're going to hit finish and then we're going to record uh, again how you would typically say this phrase or command. Once you record it as many times as you need, all you have to click is finish and then you should be good to go. And voice attack should be able to better recognize the way that you say that certain command. And that pretty much covers the basic. If you're pretty good at scripting, you can go way more advanced with this and pretty much make anything a hotkey using a program called Auto Hotkey. I personally haven't tried it myself yet, but I'm planning on working more with it. So if you hit that subscribe button, you never know there might be a voice command tutorial 2.0 in the future. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. I also stream on Twitch every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at 6 p.m. Pacific. Until then, see you in the next video. Calypso, stop recording. You got it. What do you want? Fucking doors, man. Why is it dark? Is it there? Mm hmm. Uh, no to closets.